Hi, everyone. Welcome in. I see the number of participants still going up. Awesome. All right, well, everyone's entering the room. Um, why don't you drop in the chat where you are logging in from today in the world? Um, I always love seeing where everyone's coming from. I see LA, Florida, LA, Rhode Island. I'm from Rhode Island, that's awesome. <laughs> Another Rhode Island, Woonsocket, awesome. Dallas, North Carolina, Connecticut, DC. California, Massachusetts, Connecticut, cool. Wisconsin, London. More Rhode Island. This is crazy. All right, now my second question is what is everyone watching on Netflix right now? I need a new show to watch. Suits, that's what I just finished. A lot of suits. <laughs> that's awesome. Panelists, what are you watching on Netflix right now? I'm just curious. I'm re-watching Community. Um, I think I got inspired by Ken Jong being here. <laughs> cool, cool. Funny that you mentioned Suits. I'm on season five. Awesome. Great show. I just finished this like Korean dating show called like 19 to 20. It's so good. I haven't seen that. I highly recommend. Okay. It's a little cheesy. But it's good. Okay. And then I also just finished Suits, but now I'm rewatching Grey's Anatomy, but only seasons one through 12. I will not skip past season 12. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. All right, it's two minutes. I know people are gonna keep trickling in, um, but we're gonna go ahead and get started just so we get as much out of this time together as possible. So my name is Catherine. I am a junior here at Duke studying biomedical engineering and innovation and entrepreneurship. I'm the intern for the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. So I'm gonna be hosting our student Blue Devil chat today. It's our first one of the year, super exciting. A few other things that I do on campus outside of interning at the office. I am a tour guide and an, and an admissions ambassador. I played on the club soccer team for two years. I'm super involved in the Society of Women Engineers, and I'm also in a BME Design Fellows program that works um, with students looking to work in the medical device industry. So that's a little bit about me. Now I'm going to hand it off to our panelists, and they're going to go down and introduce themselves as well. Hi everyone, my name's Issa. Um, I'm a senior and I'm studying theater and computer science. Um, outside of tour guiding and you know doing these fun admission things, um, I am super involved in one of our uh, on-campus theater groups. I'm the president, it's called Duke Players. I'm a DJ at our radio station, WXDU, and I'm also a writing consultant. Um, and I'm from New York City. Hey everyone, I'm Grace. Um, I'm a rising junior from Cary, North Carolina, so pretty close to campus. Um, but actually, I'd never been to campus until like I came here, I guess. Um, but I am a neuroscience major planning to apply to medical school. Um, and I'm part of the Backpack Project, which is um, a on-campus nonprofit that works with those experiencing homelessness in Durham. Um, I'm also part of Duke AIB, which is an Asian Christian fellowship, super fun. Um, and then I also like to play volleyball for fun. Oh, and I'm doing research in a lot. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. I'm currently a junior studying environmental science and also pursuing a minor in psychology. Um, on campus, outside of touring, I'm really involved in um, international student affairs because I'm from Singapore. Um, I also currently serve as the vice president of the Singaporean Students Association. So I work really closely with a lot of the multicultural groups on campus, as well as the International Student Center. So if you have any questions about that, do feel free to ask. Other than that, I'm pretty involved with um, 
environmental policy and advocacy groups on campus like Duke Climate Coalition and um, the Environmental Alliance. Hey all, my name is Kate. I am a sophomore studying biomedical engineering with a certificate in markets and management. Um, outside of admissions work, I'm super involved in our engineering student government where I'm class president. Um, I'm also part of SWE or the Society of Women Engineers and the Biomedical Engineering Society. Um, I also TA Engineering 101 and outside of academics in Duke, I love to play pickleball. <laughs> awesome. So that's a little bit about our panelists. You're going to get to know them a bit better throughout the next hour. Um, so now a little bit for housekeeping. This time is really meant to ask questions about what our panelists Duke experience has really been like throughout the past one, two or three years. So the way that we're going to do that is through the Q&A feature, which I see some of you are already using. So I ask that you don't type questions in the chat, use the Q&A feature, and then we're going to answer some of these questions live for you now. Um, so I'm going to start with a question that says, how easy is it to take classes outside of a certain major? If you, for instance, want to major in STEM, but then experiment with like writing or philosophy, different electives, is that possible as an undergrad? Um, so I'm going to have Issa start with that question. Yeah, uh, great question. I think um, it's absolutely possible and also encouraged by Duke's curriculum. So even um, if you are majoring in STEM, if you're in Pratt, if um, that is really your focus, uh, you have to be required to take a certain amount of classes that are more humanities based. Um, for example, Trinity, like if you're majoring in something like computer science, you have to take at least two classes in arts, literature and performance. So that could be something like a theater class or a visual arts class. So it's definitely super possible and also just encourage at Duke. Awesome. Yeah, I'll Thanks. also add on, sorry. Um, yeah, totally. That, so I sort of started off like undecided and it really did take me the full like freshman, sophomore year to like figure out that I wanted to do a neuro major. And so with that being said, like I think that just demonstrates how possible it is to just like take a lot of different classes from like totally different areas like I took obviously like normal natural science classes I also took math classes stats and policy all within like those two years not knowing my major but I'm a junior now and I can still like finish a major um, even though I have been exploring so I think it's definitely there's a lot of room Great. And that's even as, at least for Grace, as a pre-med student. So the next question is actually about pre-med. So I'm going to have you take this one as well. Um, it says, how is the pre-med program at Duke? Are there internship or shadowing opportunities available? And as someone who's interested in biomedical research as well, are there plenty of opportunities to do research as a pre-med? Uh, so um, I don't know specifically about biomedical research, but I do know just in terms of research in general, there's so many opportunities. Um, just a few of them, there's like Fast Connections, which are team-based projects. Um, you can also sort of just cold call or just cold email professors or talk to them after classes. There's also Muser, which is an online platform that we have where labs can post positions. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of opportunities. I feel like just in general, out of all the pre-med friends that I know, none of them have had trouble finding like a research position. I found that like even during the summers, like there's so many programs that do like hosts or sponsors that can allow you to participate in research. Um, outside of that, we also have a pre-health advising office. And so when you come in your freshman year, or even when you decide your sophomore year that you want to do medicine, maybe in the future, um, you'll fill out some sort of form to let them know you're interested and they'll assign you an advisor. Um, and their pre-health office is like super engaged. They always want you to like reach out for help if you just like feel overwhelmed or lost as a pre-med. Um, I've like scheduled a consultation with them before being like, I am so stressed because I didn't think about medicine until sophomore year. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like so behind everyone. What do I do? But they were super great and like just giving me direction and helping me figure out like how to like ground myself, what opportunities I should seek out now. Um, and also in terms of like just general internship opportunities, shadowing, that sort of thing. Um, Duke has 
obviously the Duke Hospital, which is sort of pretty connected towards campus. And so a lot of students will volunteer there. Um, there's also like a shadowing clearance that you have to go through. And once you get that clearance, you can sort of reach out to any um, doctors or anyone that you want to shadow within the Duke like network. And yeah, you can get the shadowing opportunities there. Hope that helps. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, now the next question, next thing I want to talk about, I have a lot of questions here about housing. Um, so Sarah, you're a junior. So now you have your third year of living on campus. So why don't you talk a little bit about the housing, East Campus, West Campus, Quad X, anything that's been relevant to your housing experience? Absolutely. So how our housing system is called Quad X, which means that um, we have a, because we have two campuses, we sort of try to join two freshman dorms with a quad on West Campus. So that's really to build a community between the freshmen and the upperclassmen who live on different campuses. But how it's structured is that uh, when you come in freshman year, you are assigned a dorm on East Campus, which is where all freshmen live and eat and go to the gym, etc. cetera. Um, and these dorms are typically um, all mixed gendered, uh, but some floors may be separated by gender depending on the dorm itself. Uh, and you can be in either a double or a single room. Um, and so you're really living together with the community. Sometimes if you're in the focus program, you'll also be living with other people in your own focus program. Um, and then how Quadex works is that um, throughout your freshman year, you're not completely destroyed from West Campus and um, the various quads that we have here for upperclassmen. Um, rather, you're directly connected based on your freshman dorm. Together with a sister dorm on East Campus, um, you'll be connected with a quad on West Campus. Um, so housing structures are pretty similar on West Campus, I would say. So you can have a double or a single room, but you also have an option, uh, typically when you're an upperclassman, like a junior or a senior, to opt for suite style living or in your senior year, you can go live off campus. Um, an alternative housing option that we also have um, is apartment style housing at 300 Swift, which is located in between um, East and West. Awesome, that's a really good overview um, of what the housing really looks like. I'll say, at least from my experience as well, there are a ton of options. Um, anything that you're really looking for housing wise, whether that's single, double, suite style, traditional dorm, Duke really does offer that. So that's awesome. All right, now I'm gonna pass it over to Kate. Um, we have a lot of BME questions in the chat, which is really exciting. So I might tag team this with you as well. Um, but it's asking about what kind of classes you've taken so far. So if you can maybe talk about what at least the first two years of classes as a BME major look like, and then maybe I'll fill in the gaps for what your upperclassmen years look like. Yeah, so for sure. Um, so as I said before, I'm a current sophomore, so I've only fully completed one year of Pratt classes. But in that first year, something really fun that personally has like defined my engineering experience so far is taking Engineering 101. And all Pratt students have to take it. And basically what it is, it's a really hands-on class. Um, you are assigned with a team to work on a real-life uh, like engineering problem. Um, for example, I had a client in Raleigh, North Carolina, and they are an organization that basically just has a bunch of free programming for students with disabilities and students with Down syndrome. And one of their most infamous programs is their handball choir. Um, and basically their handball choir just wasn't very uh, coherent or not everyone was together. So they wanted us to create a device to make a more cohesive performance. Um, so what we did is that we combined 3D printing, laser cutting, um, and Arduino, which is basically coding. You learn all these skills in EGR 101, and we made a vibrating handbell grip, which was super exciting. So every Pratt student, no matter what you are um, majoring in, takes EGR 101. And then for me, for BME, I've also taken two chem courses, um, currently in a bio course. So it's really cool because you still get those Pratt classes, um, but you also get to take some more like medical-based uh, intros. And also, Catherine can speak more to this, but um, after you declare your major in BME, you take uh, elective courses. So there's four sequences. I think we have like biomedical imaging instrumentation, uh, biomolecular tissue engineering, biomechanics, and electrobiology. 
and a lot of classes in your last two years as a junior and senior kind of focus in these elective specific like sequences. Yeah, that was a really good overview. Um, I'm going to go back to those kind of cores. So at the end of your sophomore year, what you can start thinking about is something that Kate alluded to. It's called the different core pathways of BME. So the great thing about BME is you can do really so much with your degree. And the way that Duke has their program structured is that you basically pick two different concentrations within biomedical engineering. And then all of your advanced electives fall under those two categories. So then you kind of become like specialized in a certain part of BME. So for example, I'm going to be doing the cores of the medical imaging and ultrasound, as well as the biomechanics and biomaterials. So those would be two areas that my like upper level BME classes fall under. And you also have the opportunity to do any of our fellowship programs. One of them is Pratt Research Fellows. So if you're interested in doing a ton of research and writing a thesis paper, that's a fellowship. And the one that I said that I did was the BME Design Fellows Program, which is for people that want to design medical devices. So there is a lot of flexibility with the BME program, but yes, awesome. All right. So our next question is going to be about um, tradition. So I'm glad that we're, I think, having a senior answer this question. Yes. So that's awesome. You've been here for now over three years. What's your favorite Duke tradition? Okay, this is a good question. Um, I like my first thought was sports, but, you know, everyone loves to talk about sports. So I'm just going to talk about something different. Um we have this thing called Midnight Breakfast, um, and that's something they do every year, um, and it's kind of for each grade, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's planned by, I think, DSG, our student government, or maybe somebody else, but basically um, you go and everyone in your year is invited, and it's either at, um, I think it's at Wu, which is like our Mayan dining hall on West Campus, and you go at midnight, and people come in their pajamas, and they get um, shirts that say midnight breakfast and it's just like a really um, cute tradition and then senior year um, you do it at marketplace which is like the east campus dining hall so it's like returning to where you were as a freshman so I'm like super pumped for that I think it's really cute that's a great one I always love midnight breakfast that's super fun especially when it falls during finals that's a really fun time to do it um, Grace can you talk a little bit about the clubs at Duke there are a few questions asking, are the clubs exclusive? How do you even get involved in clubs? What that whole process is like? Yeah, so I'll start off with something that happened recently. So at the beginning of every year, you'll have a club fair. And so we have one major central quad on East Campus. So if you didn't know, East Campus and West Campus are two separate campuses that we have at Duke. East Campus is primarily freshman living. And so that's where we do our club fairs every year. And if you can imagine like a massive field with like hundreds and hundreds of tables out and students um, with like just all their posters and like just everything um, that they have for their clubs. So for example, um, if you're interested in like building race cars, there's like this one group that I always remember, they have like the cars that they build um, and so, yeah, it's a huge event. And this is sort of where you'll first start to maybe get a glimpse of what clubs there are at Duke, um, which it can be overwhelming. Um, but yeah, I think either through like the club fair or even through like word of mouth, like meeting upperclassmen, seeing what they're involved with, um, that sort of thing. I think in terms of like, oh, we also have like just a platform called Duke Groups, which you can use to find clubs and also to filter out clubs based on interest, like whether that is religious, sports related, um, pre-med related, that sort of thing. Um, in terms of the question about like clubs being exclusive, um, I think that sort of just depends on the club. Um, obviously like clubs that are like maybe a like premier business society or tech or consulting or finance those tend to be more exclusive in that they will have like recruiting uh that will happen like each week or like at the beginning of the semesters that sort of thing um there are some social clubs that have rushing um but yeah i think in general a lot of clubs like for example like service clubs or religious orgs are all super like 
inclusive and welcoming. Um, and yeah, I think you can definitely find like whatever club that you're interested in here. Um, and if not, you can always make your own as well. Great. Um, okay, Sarah, I'm gonna pass it to you. A little bit about how you chose your major. So did you immediately know what you wanted to study at Duke? How did you kind of figure that out? And what's it like if you change your mind and want to change a major? Yeah, sure. So I actually applied to Duke knowing that I wanted to be an environmental science major, but I knew I also wanted to tack on other things, but I wasn't quite sure what. Um, how I really decided on my course of study was to really try different courses in different departments throughout my freshman year and even a little bit into sophomore year. Um, I would say that it is really easy um, to sort of just explore different things that are new to you. So I took Psych 101 my freshman fall um, with Professor Bridget Hard, who is an incredible lecturer, and she single-handedly convinced me to immediately just start pursuing a minor in psychology. Um, as for um, switching majors, although I haven't personally had that um, sort of challenge, I uh, a lot of my friends have actually switched from drastically different majors. For example, one of my friends switched from being a BME pre-med to being a philosophy major. Um, and that sort of switch is really supported by your academic advisors, whether that be post, um, post major declaration or prior. Um, but so they will usually um, try to give you as much advice as possible on how you can fulfill the necessary prerequisites in, depending on what major you're switching into. Um, but the way that our academic schedule, so to speak, is structured is such that you have that time and space before major declaration to figure out what you want to do. And even if you decide to change it after, you're still going to be okay to graduate on time. Unless you're, um, logically speaking, if you're switching into a pre-med program, I think Grace could speak more on this. Um, if you decide on pre-med a little later, you may have to overload on courses and such. But um, all the advice is given to you um, right there and then if you need it. Awesome. Okay, we're completely going to switch gears now from talking about majors to talking about um, work-life balance and sports that keep coming up. I have probably 50 questions here about sports. Um, so Kate, would you talk a little bit about the athletic culture on campus, what that's like and how it kind of plays into our work-life balance? Yeah, for sure. So I, like the 50 plus people who have asked these questions, I'm also a huge Duke sports fan, especially basketball. Um, and one thing, kind of speaking on the work-life balance part, is that this past year, I actually tented for the UNC Duke home game, um, which was by far like my favorite experience I've had at Duke. Um, I there's So when you tent, it's groups of 12. I didn't know six people I was tenting with, um, but it was really cool. I made six new best friends. Um, we all like studied for the test in order to tent. We all stuck it out for the whole month. Um, and it was just a really special experience. The UNC Duke home game was so worth it. Um, and even outside of that month, I try to attend every sports game I can. Like this morning, we actually had a club soccer game and one of my best friends is on the team. Um, so went and supported her. Um, and just in general, sports life has been really fun. It really creates a unique community, which I've never seen anywhere else. And it also really cultivates like school pride. And it's something that you can relate to, like, no matter where you go, like if you're standing some like next to someone in the bleachers of a football game, go do football. Um, you just like make new best friends everywhere and it's really fun. And it's a really cool place because everyone you see in class, you'll also see out of class um, in like a social context. So that's really nice to like get to know each other and just bond over sports. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great answer. Um, we're definitely a huge basketball school, but one of my favorite Duke sports experiences was the Clemson football game that happened last weekend. I don't know if any of the other panelists were there, um, but that was definitely like the best way to kick off the school year. Um, first weekend of the semester. For those of you that saw the videos on ESPN, all the students storming the field, like it was a blast. So it's definitely a huge sports school and a lot of 
fun that that lives right on campus. All right, so we're gonna go back to the beginning now. Um, I'm gonna go back to Issa. There are a few questions here about Duke since it's such an academically um, prestigious school, a little bit about the competitive versus collaborative nature of our students and our classes. So would you be able to speak to your experience with that? Sure, yeah. Um, so obviously Duke is a super rigorous school um, and I agree. Um, everyone here has like a lot of ambition. It's really cool. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's super competitive. At least I found that um, Duke students are kind of willing to help each other out in some cases. Like um, you have students in your bigger classes who are your TAs or who are consulting with you. And I think that's something that's very cool about Duke students is everyone has their own goal and definitely is trying to achieve this, but it's not necessarily like you're stepping on other people in the way. I think um, people are willing to help you out. People are willing to meet up if you're having um, trouble with the homework in your class. Um, so I do think that I have experienced like a lot of these collaborative moments. I'm a TA um, for like a computer science class and I love just like sitting in office hours, helping people out. Uh, yeah. Great. Um, Grace. Can you talk a little bit about Durham and the city that is around Duke? What do people do off campus? Yeah, so I sort of just answered a question about doing like, or working in like service around Durham. So I will, I guess, like restate what I wrote briefly. Um, so basically there's a lot of communities in Durham that a lot of students are really passionate about working with. And so um, whether this is those experiencing homelessness through the backpack project, whether this is seniors in nursing homes that might need um, some just like one on one attention or extra like activities to keep them engaged. Um, there are those opportunities through Duke organizations. Um, there's also those targeting rural health. So if you go a little bit more outside of Durham, um, but yeah, you can find so much of this online. So I will uh, veer away from that. Um, there's a lot. Um, and so I guess in terms of just like general, like what people do on the weekends, there's a really nice farmer's market in downtown Durham. It's walkable from East Campus. Um, you can also drive there. Um, and it's super nice. Like there's lots of food. You can buy flowers. I am a dog lover and there's always so many dogs there. Um, there's so much good food. There's also a really good boba place there really good bagels as well um so that's a really fun thing um yeah i guess the uh yeah other than that i think if you just think about like north carolina itself um we're not necessarily like a really big city i will say durham's sort of like up and coming i guess um and there's like just really nice hikes trails that you can take that sort of thing um, if anyone else wants to add anything, um, I'm a pretty boring person, so I don't know like too much about what's off campus. I would like to add that the food scene in Durham is really awesome. Um, I want to ask what everyone's favorite Durham restaurants are for anyone that's planning on coming to visit Duke soon. Um, these are definitely places that I would recommend or everyone's fan favorite. So go down the line. I want, I'm just curious to hear. Um, my favorite restaurant in Durham is Elmo's Diner. Um, it is like such classic, just really good diner food, amazing cornbread, eggs, beans, everything. Um, it's awesome. It's right off 9th Street, which is right by East Campus um, where the freshmen live. So you can walk if you're a freshman and hang out there. Oh, my personal favorite is a Chinese restaurant called Shanghai. Um, I, together with some of my friends from Singapore, we've all gotten really close to the owners there because they always give us free rice. Um, but they're, it's run by a really lovely Chinese family and they have great, great Chinese food. I was also gonna say Shanghai, but um, there is also one that's a, a place that's a little closer to campus, that's a noodle place, it's called Wheat. Um, it's fairly new, but they do have pretty good food. Um, and there's also a hot pot place that just opened on 9th Street, which 
9th Street, if you guys didn't know, it is right off of East Campus. Like, literally, you can walk from your dorm to the street, and there's, like, access to all this food. So, yeah, it's pretty good. And then to switch it up, my favorite place is called Mother and Sons. It's literally like a seven to 10 minute walk from campus. It's the best Italian food I've ever had. Like anytime, like one of my friends or I like have a birthday, we always go there. Um, they have amazing lasagna and it's just always like really fun whenever we go. Mothers and Sons is one of my favorites as well. Um, yeah, it's really good. Definitely recommend that one if you're ever in the area. Um. Sarah, I'm going to go back and ask a little bit more. Since you're an international student, which you've mentioned a few times, there are some questions in the chat asking what it was like coming to Duke as an international student. Yeah, definitely. Um, So to give you a little bit of background, I originally come from Singapore, but I did spend three years at a boarding school in Japan prior to coming to Duke. Um, So for me, the experience was... There was a little bit of a culture shock for me initially just coming to America, I think, um, compared to my experiences in East Asia. Um, there's a lot more variety of personality here. So that was socially something for me to adjust to. But one thing that I really appreciated about Duke even, and something that I felt even prior to coming to Duke itself is the presence of um, other international students who are going through very similar experiences. Um, the Duke International Student Center is a huge source of support for me. Um, personally, they have provided so much um, opportunity for me to meet other people who are also international. Um, and it really helped me feel at home, um, even though I live across, like halfway across the world. Um, and one other thing that has been so, so special to me throughout my time here and has really made my Duke experience so positive is the presence of um, multicultural clubs. So I, as I said during my introduction, I currently serve as the vice president of the Singaporean Students Association. Um, but with that, I also work really closely with the Asian Students Association, other multicultural groups like Duke DIA and so on, um, Duke DIA being a South Asian group. Um, and so I've really been able to appreciate um, just the wide diversity that Duke offers in its student body itself. Um, so through events, like um, we have a uh, the Asian Students Association, ASA, always um, organize like mini gatherings or even larger concerts on an annual basis. So I really get to interact with a lot of those people, which makes things a lot more comfortable. Great, thank you. Um, Kate, can you talk a little bit about the professors you've had so far and what your relationship with your professors has been like? Yeah, definitely. So last year, something that was really special for me is that my EGR 101 professor also, it was his first year at Duke. So he is also my academic advisor, which has been really, really special. Um, I see him multiple times a week. We talk literally all the time um anytime that like I want to meet with him like I know he's always there and open um which has been truly really amazing for me because I've never had like a teacher or professor in the past that has like gone out of their way to like really help me as much as he has um outside of that um all of the professors have been amazing at their job and even in like the larger lectures like in my chem 101 class for example there was over like 500 students in that class, but it still feels incredibly personalized. Like my professor literally was down to me at any time. All of my professors have multiple office hours um, throughout the week. All of our TAs also have them as well. And we also have like student groups. Um, the professors have been amazing. And we also have this really cool program called Flunch, which is basically a free lunch on Duke um, with your professor. And you get two of these a semester. And it's been an amazing way to just like get to know them as people more so um, outside of that academic context. Um, so I think definitely the like professor relationships have been really special for me in my like journey so far. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go back to Issa. Can you talk a little bit from a Trinity perspective? Um, people asked if there's a core curriculum or if there are certain classes you have to take to graduate. Can you walk through a little bit about how the Trinity requirements are set up? Sure. 
Um, so for Trinity and Pratt, um, you need 34 courses to graduate. So what this looks like is about four-ish classes per semester and maybe some classes, um, some semesters where you'd be taking five classes, which is considered overloading. Um, and in terms of a core curriculum in Trinity, um, we have requirements and there are no classes that are like 100% you have to take other than your major classes. So we have um, categories like, I mentioned this before, arts, literature and performance, civilizations, um, social sciences, quantitative sciences. Um, and there's one more that I can't remember. Oh, lang your foreign language requirement. Um, and so you have to take two classes in each of those, except for the foreign language class, it's three. And then there are um, some differing options for if you have AP or IB credit. Um, but yeah, so it's not specific classes that you have to take. It's more in different disciplines that you have to take. Um, so for example, um, my roommate is a neuroscience major and uh, she is um, like has never taken an arts class in her life. And I'm making her take like the acting 101 class um, to fulfill that requirement. So that's an option, but you can also do something like visual arts if that's not something you want. And then conversely, I'm, I haven't taken like a lot of, um, uh oh natural sciences classes and uh there are like a lot of options for not necessarily majors to take um we took a class called the dynamic oceans which um we learned a lot a little bit about marine biology and things like that um but there's definitely a lot of freedom with the curriculum to take classes that you're interested in while still fulfilling those requirements cool the next question is for grace and i want you to answer this because you are the closest we have to a local here so what's the weather like at Duke in Durham in North Carolina? People are saying they're from LA, India. What's what's the, the weather like over here? Yeah, so I think North Carolina in general is pretty good for seasons area. And so you'll see the fall leaves, which honestly fall is like my favorite season here because like just like the foliage and all of the colors are just so beautiful, especially if you like to go on trails or hikes. Um, we will get a little bit of snow, but nothing crazy, really, um, like maybe like a few centimeters, maybe an inch or two, um, but it's nothing bad. Um, and it will get a little bit cold, but again, it's like maybe definitely not below like 25 or something. And that's that would be like pushing it too. Um, yeah, I do. I will say that like spring and stuff, it can be in summer. It's like a little bit humid here. We do get some rain. Um, if you do have allergies, um, it might be a little bit hard. But I mean, I guess there's like allergy medicine or something. But I think in general, like, it's pretty decent. Like you get all four seasons. It's not like overly hot or like overly I would agree with that. Coming from New England, it's definitely pretty mild weather when talking about the winter. Nothing crazy, not feet of snow at a time, nothing like that. So you definitely come to appreciate that. Sarah, I'm going to ask you now a little bit about your transition to Duke. Some people are saying not a lot of kids from my area go to North Carolina for college. How do you adapt if you come to this campus without knowing anyone? So how would you kind of outline that process of your first few weeks, months as a freshman? Um, yeah, so I think as a freshman, what may be difficult to understand at that point in time, but is much clearer in hindsight, is that everybody is really in the same position of being super scared and super nervous about meeting people. Um, but I was really encouraged by our orientation week programs and also just our residential model um to interact with people around me and I also met a lot of my friends through class and through clubs um but in particular a lot of people meet their closest friends through programs like our experiential orientation which allows students to spend their orientation week going out into Durham and beyond and working on a particular focus such as exploring the wild or focusing on public policy and things like that. Um, but personally, I I really um, made my closest friends in class, um, especially through my foreign language class, because we were in the same class for three whole semesters. I got to build really deep bonds with the people around me there. 
Um, but I think it is also really different for everyone based on their own interests and their personalities. Um, but just being open to the experience of meeting people who are different from you is also really important. Great, thank you. Kate, I, a question in the chat made me laugh and I'd love for you to answer it. Um, it said, if you're an engineer, do you still have time to have fun? What do you do for fun? So I'll let you answer that one. Yeah, for sure. So coming into college, actually, I probably went on one of these chats and probably asked like the same thing verbatim. Um, Cause like, I've never been like an engineering or like STEM kid. And so coming in last year, um, into Pratt I was like I don't know how these people do it like I'll never have free time um, but you definitely do and I think one thing that takes a little bit of time to figure out is time management just like when you want to do your work are you like an early class person in the morning or do you like later classes um, and like once you figure that out and figure out like how much work you have after the first few weeks you can kind of get into a set schedule um, and so what I try to do is after my classes on Friday, I'll do like, I'll grind out for a few hours and then I'll go to like something we have like an e-social, which is like a little engineering social each Friday night, um, which I like to go to. We have free food. Um, so it's amazing. I get my dinner. Um, and then after that, what my friends and I try to do is either watch like an episode of a show or any movie right now. I'm forcing everyone, like I said, to watch Grey's Anatomy. Um, so that's been great. And then Saturday mornings, I try to just do as much work as I can. And then normally Saturday night, watch whatever sports game we have going on, um, whether that be at Craft, which is one of our dining hall spots, like on the TVs, or if it's a home game, then at um, the stadium. Um, and then I also just try to get outside as much as possible. I try to go for a run. I get really humbled when I go for a run, but I try to do it. Um, but yeah, so you definitely have free time. Um, it's just all about time management and figuring out your schedule. That's totally right. And it definitely takes some time to figure it out. It doesn't happen instantly. But once you do, you totally have a, a normal, I'd say, balanced, like typical college life. So that's awesome. You mentioned craft being one of the places that you can watch games. Craft House is one of our dining spots on campus, which brings me to our next question of how is the food on campus? This is one of my favorite questions to answer on tours. So why don't we first go around and say what our favorite place to eat is on campus? And then maybe um, Issa can go into a little bit more detail about Duke Dining. Sure, yeah. Um, I think my favorite place is probably Ginger and Soy. Um, They've got um, kind of pokey. They have ramen, um, super good stuff. Yeah, I would also say ginger and soy. Um, and then we have like a Bryan Center, which is separate from the main West Campus Dining Hall. And they also have like a newer restaurant there called Gothic Grill. Um, they have this really creepy gargoyle there. But aside from that, like, I've been hearing like people say that the food there is like super good as well. Yeah, I was about to say my current favorite is Gothic Grill. It just opened this semester. So I've been going there pretty regularly and trying their entire menu. Um, but a close second for me would definitely be Ginger and Soy, which I think is a campus wide favorite. <laughs> Yeah, those two are really good answers. I haven't been to Gothic Grill, but they have tacos, and I've heard the tacos are amazing. <laughs> um, but outside of those two, I would definitely say Sazon. I am a big Chipotle person, and Sazon is like a fresher, like, in my opinion, healthier, better Sazon, or better Chipotle. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> and yeah, just to talk a little bit more, I guess, about what food looks like at Duke, um, Basically, as a freshman, you're going to live on East Campus, and that's where you have your dining hall marketplace, which is a little more like typically what you would think about of uh, with college food. It's buffet style. So you eat there for breakfast and lunch, and then all the freshmen have the same meal plan. So you also get a certain amount of food points for when you're on West Campus for your classes, and you want to grab lunch or a snack or a coffee or whatever, and then you can do that in Woo, which is... Um, and food points, um, it's one food point, one dollar can be used at all these locations that we were talking about. And then when you're a um, an upperclassman and you'll live on West Campus, you're able to select between a variety of meal plans. Um, some of them are a little bit smaller. Some of them are a little bit bigger, depending on if you're planning on cooking or if you want to get a coffee or a snack every day. Um, 
with in addition to your meals. Um, and again, it's one food point, one dollar, and it can be used at any of our locations on campus. Great. All right, my next question is anyone can really take this, but has anyone done focus or Duke engage? No. Uh, I did do focus. Okay, um, awesome. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. So I did that freshman year. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what focus is, it's essentially like a freshman year specific program where you get to um, sort of hop into an area of interest. Um, just your first semester with a small cohort of people. So there's like 20 to 30 people, I think, in general. Um, you will also live with this cohort of people in the same dorm. Um, and so each focus program is assigned like a different dorm. Um, and so the idea is sort of just to foster interest among people who have like similar passions. And so I did the focus program humanitarian challenges um, where we looked at like historical figures, how they spearheaded movements of their time, um, that sort of thing. And then within that, I took two classes. Um, and so through these classes, you will get your seminar requirement for your um, freshman year. So all freshmen are required to take a seminar. Um, so you'll get that. And then, yeah, there's so many different like specific focuses. So for example, one that is super popular is cognitive neuroscience and law. Um, I think there's also a global health one that is really popular. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, I think there's also like one that's like more on like video gaming or something like that. There's just there's so many options. And I think the focus program is really great if you are very interested in the content area and you also want like a smaller class size to where like, for example, freshman year, generally you're taking a lot of intro classes with like hundreds of people in the lecture hall um, versus the focus class. It's just a small room. And so you really get to build a different type of connection with your professors. Oh, and you also have weekly dinners. And so um, this will be some seminar where the professors will like talk about something. You all just like sit together, eat food. Um, food is catered. So that's also nice. Awesome. Great. Yeah, my freshman year roommate did focus and she spoke very highly of it. But same thing that you mentioned, Grace, she was really interested in like that niche subject. So it totally made sense for her to go with it. You don't have to do it, but it's something that's a great resource or a great way to meet a smaller group of people during your freshman fall. So that's awesome. All right. Our next question, which might be our last question before we start wrapping up, is what is something that surprised you about Duke? Anyone can really take this or multiple people can answer it. Okay. Um, I would definitely say um, the people has been the most surprising and the best part all at once. Um, coming into Pratt specifically, there's like this thing that's like, oh, like engineers don't know how to like talk or have fun, but it's so crazy. Like you'll find people with such, who are so like-minded from you. And I think something special about Duke is that everyone is just like so passionate about what they do. And it's crazy because every, literally every single person has a different passion. Like me and Catherine are both obviously like BME majors, but we're probably like pursuing different things in that. And it's just really amazing because everyone not only speaks so highly about what they love to do, but also speaks so highly about everyone in general. Um, and I think everyone here has been extremely open-minded and extremely just communicative. And it's been truly amazing. I love the people. <laughs> Cliche, but it's true. All right. So we have about 10 minutes left and I do want to leave some time for this. There were a lot of questions in the chat about the why Duke question. For those of you that aren't aware, um, when you do apply to Duke on the common application, we do ask, why do you want to come to Duke? Um, so how we normally end our tours, if you've ever been on one of our in-person tours, is as tour guides, we tell you why we chose to come to Duke when we were sitting in your shoes a few short years ago. So we're all going to kind of take a turn and say, why Duke for us? Sure, I can start. Um, so uh, I'm a senior. It's like been so long, whatever, since I uh, answered this question. But I remember 
Um, when I was applying, I was thinking um, a lot about like the different things I want to do. So I'm studying like computer science and theater. And I thought it was so cool that so many Duke students had um, different pathways. And most Duke students either have a double major or a major and some minors. Um, and so that's something that I've still pursued at Duke. So that is definitely still in line with why I want to go here. But then just speaking a little bit more broadly, um, I think I liked the kind of um, vibe at Duke of everyone being very into Duke and being passionate about the community and everyone's wearing all of their Duke merch around all the time. Um, so I think school spirit and community are some things that um, have really made my Duke experience special. Yeah, I think for me, going along sort of with what Issa said, um, I think the main thing was I was looking for ways that I can find community at Duke. Um, and so I think I was able to, even when I was like applying, just like looking at all of the student groups and sort of what Duke students are interested in, I found a lot that aligned with what I'm interested in. Um, and so since it's like my next four years and I knew it was probably going to be a stressful next four years, I definitely wanted to make sure wherever I ended up was somewhere that I could feel comfortable. I could try new things, meet new people. Um, that's another thing where like in terms of what I found surprising was just like how many different types of people that I've met from different lived experiences. I think I learned so much from others um, in that regard. And yeah, like most of my friends are like out of state or out of country, out of continent. Um, and so, yeah, it's been really cool. For me, when I was um, thinking about where I wanted to spend four years for college, I was really looking for two things. One of them was a close-knit community. And Duke really exemplifies that. Um, we have massive school spirit. I really felt it throughout my um two years here and the second thing was that I really was looking for a place where I could be academically challenged but not in a competitive way and that was something that was so important to me when I was looking at schools I didn't want to feel like I was competing against my peers rather I wanted to be working with them and because Duke promotes so much um, collaboration and team-based learning and things like that um, it has been so special and so it's been a lot more productive for me as a learner to be able to focus on my own achievements rather than that of others. I like Sarah's answer. She gave a really good answer. Uh, mine's a little more like out there but um so I'm from Charlotte North Carolina and my older sister she's four years older she's like my role model she's the coolest person I will and have ever met um, so she actually went to the school down the road, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, <laughs> um, and she absolutely loved it there. Um, I like to say that UNC was her Duke, and then she likes to say that Duke is my UNC. Um, and so like my whole life, I grew up a Carolina fan, and while I still love them, um, when it got like my sophomore, junior year of college, and I, or of high school, and I started looking at colleges, I really wanted somewhere that could give me like a BME degree and UNC doesn't really have many very many options for that um and one day my dad and I visited Duke um and he was like oh my gosh like Kate you just lit up and my sister said the same thing and then for some reason my sister and I thought this was like the biggest deal in the world and I was like oh my god you support me going to Duke and she was like of course and all this stuff and then we started crying right in front of the chapel kind of poetic um but I loved it ever since and I ED'd and now I'm here that's a really cute story. I like that. I've never heard that one. Um, I'm going to give mine as well, just because we have a few minutes. Um, but for those of you from Rhode Island, I mentioned before, I am from Rhode Island. Um, when I was looking at colleges, it was really two main things for me, aside from escaping the snow. Um, the first one was having a really big sports scene. So Duke basketball was the reason that Duke was on the map in my mind, but then once I started looking into Duke a little bit more, I saw that all of our ACC teams are really awesome, 
And I really wanted that kind of school spirit. Somebody else mentioned where you're walking around and people are wearing like Duke sweatshirts all the time. And like, they don't pay us to do that or anything. Like people really just do want to be representing the school that they go to, which is really awesome. And like Kate, I did tent for the Duke UNC game last year. So that was really awesome. My parents saw me front row ESPN college game day with the little hat on. So that was a really great highlight. So that was the first checkbox that Duke definitely had. But back home in Rhode Island, I went to a career and technical high school where I studied pre-engineering and robotics. So I knew from about my sophomore year of high school that I was going to do engineering in college. So that, in my mind, complicated my search a little bit because, yes, I was looking for this big sports school, but I wanted a school of engineering that was a close-knit community, but one that wasn't really excluded from being part of like the greater university, if that makes sense. So Pratt for me really did that. If you come to see campus, you'll see a space called the Engineering Quad, which we call E-Quad. And it's a little consolidated community right in the heart of Duke's campus. So it's not like if you're an engineer, you have to take a bus to classes or anything like that. You're really well integrated into the whole campus like culture, but you do have that added benefit of an even smaller group of students, even smaller group of professors that you get to know really well. So that for me was like the perfect community balance, of course, with the nicer weather than the Boston area. But altogether, that's why I decided to come to Duke. So we are wrapping up. We're just about to hit three o'clock. But I just wanted to say thank you for coming and logging on and spending an hour of your Sunday afternoon with us. Um, I hope you learned something from all of our panelists. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Duke admissions office. But thank you all for joining us today. So we're going to say bye. <laughs>